Hello everyone and welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to talk about a growing number of women are redefining what home looks like. For many of them it looks like a van. I have come across some videos that show women living in a van as like a glamorous, stress-free way to live. And while that can be true at times, it isn't always. There is a lurking danger to solo women. So let's talk about it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share the video, it's free. The trend to hashtag van life is fueled by the declining affordability of homes, rental shortages in urban centers, and resort communities, and by a shift in our definition of community from physical neighborhood to online social networks. Over the past few years, a new wave of young solo van life travelers have packed up their lives and hit the road to explore the country or to avoid paying these exorbitant rent prices. For a myriad of reasons, more Black women than ever before are ditching the status quo to live on the road. A search of the popular hashtag van life Instagram tag turns up a mind-boggling 9 million posts, up more than 450% from 2017, humble million and some. Facebook subgroups range in subject from solo female van life, an itinerant cooking inspiration to van life-centric dating and love. Apart from the flexibility and nomadic lifestyle allows, associated ideals of minimalism and financial freedom have turned many onto the trend in recent years. Student loan debt in the U.S. has more than doubled over the past decade. In 2024, the Federal Reserve estimated that it surpassed $1.6 trillion, and meanwhile, the median housing price is increasing by about 15% per year. One 2020move.org survey found that 72% of participants were willing to trade their homes for a van to pay off debt. A third of them said they'd commit to the lifestyle for at least two years. There is no doubt that, when you are traveling or living in a vehicle, you are more vulnerable and can seem like more of a target, especially when you are in sketchy areas or unfamiliar territory. There are very different understandings of this choice of residence, depending on which side of the steering wheel you're on. But understanding the experiences of van dwellers is important not just for those looking to cut their ties to rents and mortgages, but also for community planners and employers. They see van dwelling as a source of freedom from mortgages, rent, utilities, and the possessions that come with traditional dwelling places. And while it looks like a dream from the outside, life on the road for solo female travelers can be daunting, and many of them have taken extreme precautions to ensure they stay and feel safe on their travels. So many people see the gorgeous hashtag van life photos and think living in a van is all about sunsets, cooking outside, and swimming in the ocean. But what you don't see is the mosquitoes, hot and sweaty nights, as well as the constant struggles of living in such a small space and the dangers. In case you ever considered living in a van for yourself, you'll want to watch this video first as I reveal the truth about living in a van. These are the pros and cons as well as just general things to be aware of when it comes to van life. A solo woman living out of a van was left terrified when a man drove up to her vehicle under the guise of being a good Samaritan to warn her that another man was supposedly watching her with binoculars from a distance. Alyssa had been parked in a remote spot on government-owned land outside of Tucson, Arizona, when a stranger drove up in an all-terrain vehicle and struck up a conversation. Out of nowhere, the man's ATV could be heard growing louder in the footage shot by Alyssa for her YouTube channel before he pulled up to her van, parked, and asked her if she was doing okay. To this, Alyssa responded that she was. Alyssa then asked him if he was a park ranger. The man responded that he wasn't, but said he lived close by and claimed that he regularly drove around the area to offer campers water. The man also peppered her with questions about what she does for a living and how long she'd been on the road. He then told her of himself, just so you know, so you're not worried, I drive by here. I live here like a mile and a half from here, so I kind of drive through. When I'm here, just checking on people, making sure they got water, got what they need. So if you do stay, I'll see you again. But that's all I'm doing. Nothing spooky. He said to Alyssa, seemingly in an attempt to reassure her he was a non-threatening presence at the campground. Before driving off, he went on another tangent about how he'd had things stolen from his house previously and after that started making myself open to people that were out here, giving them my name so they knew who I was, so they saw my face. He then said that she would be welcome to come by his house and use his shower. After three and a half minutes, he finally pulled away, only for Alyssa to realize he still wasn't totally gone as she could still hear the muffled sounds of his motor not far off. And, indeed, to Alyssa's intense discomfort, some minutes later, the man came back. And, on his second visit to Alyssa of the afternoon, he took a different approach, one even more riddled with red flags. 
Hi. So, you have a guy on the mountain up there that is watching you with binoculars, the man declared from the driver's seat of his ATV. Well, that's unnerving. I guess I won't be staying. Alyssa answered warily. She'd been sitting in the back of her van, folding laundry and was now speaking to the stranger through its open side door. Well, it's not that you can't stay. I'll be honest with you, the other side of the mountain is safer, the man offered. He's driving an older Dodge pickup. And he told me that he comes out here and offers water to people. But I would stay away from him. He told me he parks up there and looks around to see who might need water, who might need this, who might need that. He continued of his supposed conversation with this other man in the area. It was especially odd that, according to what the man in the ATV was saying, this unseen second man was also in the habit of lingering in the area to help campers in need of water just like the man claimed to be doing himself in his initial conversation with Alyssa minutes earlier. Alyssa tried to lighten the mood by saying that she was happy to get some housework done, referring to her folding her laundry. Next thing she knew, the man began staring straight at her as he slowly tapped his fingers on his steering wheel and didn't break his gaze for nearly a minute. Only when she asserted asked the man if he needed anything, did he respond, no, before he finally restarted his engine and drove off. Alyssa then shared an on-screen text, as soon as he was out of sight, I grabbed my solar panels and power bank, threw everything in the van, and drove as far away from the area as possible. Alyssa eventually parked in a parking lot, where she addressed the incident on camera. I was sensing some red flags, Alyssa said of her reaction to the man's first visit, adding that, as soon as he'd driven away for the first time, she'd already been planning to hightail it out of there. I just went with my instinct, and I was going to leave because he said that he drives around, seeing if anyone needs water. But he had no water with him. That was weird, she said. Something else that gets me, with people is over-explaining. When I asked him if he was a ranger, and he said, no. He said he does this because a few years ago, someone stole stuff from his house. Which has nothing to do with giving people water in the desert, Alyssa further reflected. After he returned with the story about another man watching her, who'd also supposedly been hanging around to give campers water, Alyssa described that more alarm bells instantly went off for her. It was just weird because he said that the person who was watching me claims that they give people water who need it, she added. That is exactly what he just told me that he did. He was just being very suspicious. He would tell me something, then stare at me, then take really long pauses and just stare at me. She said, I know the lifestyle I live comes with inherent risks, she added of her van-centric day-to-day. The Texas native had began living out of a van in fall of 2021 and, prior to that, had been regularly on the road since 2020. The next morning, Alyssa doubled down on her gut instinct about the ATV driving man. That guy, dude, she declared. The more I thought about it, the creepier he got. Like, serious Ted Bundy vibes. If Ted Bundy was not charming and bad at lying. For some women travelers, living in a van is more representative of being free and living a minimalist lifestyle. But that doesn't mean everybody thinks that way. Living in a van down by the river is a common quote used to describe becoming a failure in life. When living in a van, expect some people not to overly understand your choices. Some people will automatically assume you are poor or have no other option. But this isn't the case for some people. But for others it is a reality and that stigma is still there and you need to be prepared to be judged at least a little bit. When you live in a van, your costs are minimal. No rent and no electricity or water bills. Your main cost will be gas and food. It is a very cheap way to live or travel. For those on a budget, van life is cheaper than living in a house or apartment. Living in a van is different than living in a tiny home though because no matter how hard you try, a van is not a house. It is always in a public space and you can't comfortably stand up, move around, watch TV, or just dance around the kitchen in your underwear. While you can park in isolated places, you still could be in the public eye and that gets annoying pretty quickly. You will always be on the move. It is also hard not having a home to just go back and relax it. This sounds ridiculous, especially to travelers who are used to being on the move from hotel to hotel, but living in a van is different. There is something annoying about not having a place to just go back and relax. In the summer, the van is often too hot to have an afternoon lay down. It also takes a bit of planning and work being always on the move and finding places to park. Many places have restrictions on where you can camp in a van which means you need to know these laws and find the right places to stay. Some places have restrictions on how long you can stay in one area, which forces you to keep moving. While living in a van, it is helpful to keep Google Maps open and always searching for where you can set up for a night. Some women say it gets draining after a bit of time. The stories I have found from overlanders getting robbed are all very similar. Usually things get stolen 
when people work together to distract you while another robs you or they have had things stolen from their vehicle while the van door has been open and they have been sitting inside on their laptops. It is hard to always be aware of what is going on around you 24 seven. But if you are in a crowded place or people are approaching you in your van, keep your eyes on your gear and don't leave stuff hanging around or on your vehicle. It would be easy to overlook the hardships of living in a van when much of the media surrounding it paints the lifestyle in a glamorous light. However, the daily quest to find a shower and a place to park, not to mention working for money and keeping such a compact space tidy, can be exhausting. When deciding whether to adopt this unorthodox lifestyle, it's important not to ignore the many uncomfortable parts. Not all places are ideal for camping as a single woman. And at time there are no public lands or national forests available, van lifers are left to seek refuge on noisy city streets, in brightly lit parking lots, and in residential neighborhoods. In the Outbound Living Survey, 21% of participants said they sleep in urban environments primarily. Most often, van life is a mix of serene sleepouts and city squatting. The latter can lead to hostile looks from spooked out locals or a police officer knocking on your window in the middle of the night. Van lifers must research whether the city they're visiting has a set of anti-camping ordinances, because disobeying them could warrant a ticket. Van life is not considered normal, street signs, barriers in front of parking lots, local residents or the police explicitly telling you that you're not welcome. Expect to receive negative reactions to sleeping in public places and washing in public restrooms. You will have to seek out those places in which to dump garbage, recycling, and gray or black water because you can't simply throw that stuff on the ground. Van life may appear lazy and indulgent on social media, but it takes immense effort to keep everything clean, including yourself. The Outbound Living study revealed that 28% of van lifers shower at the gym, 21% use built in van showers, 20% use campsite facilities, and a combined 13% said they bathe in nature with baby wipes or at the beach. Living in a van means spending most of your time in public places. Whether you're showering at the gym, brushing your teeth at a rest stop, making coffee in a parking lot, or sleeping under a street lamp, you mostly waive your right to privacy. Anyone can knock on your door or peek into your home unannounced, and rest assured, they will. Blackout window covers can help, not just with privacy but also with providing insulation during the winter. As a woman you have to always be aware of your surroundings. So I hope you found this video helpful if you did leave a like and a comment. And if it is your first time on the channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment, like and share the video. Until next time.